Back to my poem on immigration. Immigration. Some people disappear at night, some during the day. ICE asking for papers, going back to Mexico, just deportees. I saw whole families and half families go, mothers without children, children without a mother, four years of scrubbing a floor or making beds, then they were gone, back to over the border. The wind blows between lines on a map. This I wrote a long time ago about the mission. I think it was the way the mission used to be. Street round one. Everyone is making homeward through the street, their murky footsteps on a gray afternoon evening. The dividing line not clear today. The street, its usual caterpillar, crawling, wriggling. Sometimes the street purrs, rubbing its fat stomach on the bottom of everyone's feet. Sometimes the street is thin, robbed, lonely like a beach on Monday. Sometimes the street surrounds me, fences me, throws me, bounces me. The street, the beautiful street of glistening store windows, of plastic Madonnas, of used furniture, of jeweled fingers, the street like an open-air church. This will be my last one. It's called Keys. She had a key to the door once. Did she drop it when she left? Her grandma had a key too. Grandma buried it deep in the soil. The door is missing now. At least that one is in Krakow. A brother has the key to the door in Ramallah. How long do keys last? asked a little girl. As long as one can remember the way to go back to a home, her grandma said. And what if you can't go back to a home? The little girl asked. They are the keys to one's heart. Nice. Oh, so tell me about how long the magazine has been around. And just a little, I want to tell you a little bit about, about the publication. She didn't have a chance to do that, so. The publication started by Indigo Hotchkiss and Clifford McIntyre. Clifford was a former Korean War uh, veteran, and also he was a heroin addict, and he was incarcerated for a while. And then when he got out, uh, he lived in the Haight-Ashbury, and at some point he decided to start a literary magazine here, and Indigo was his partner, and then after Cliff died, um, she kept the magazine going with a whole array of different editors over the years, uh, including myself and Cesar and Conyus and John Meehan, who started the Haight-Ashbury Soup Kitchen. And our next reader is... Uh, uh, oh, that would be Cesar. Cesar Love. But but still come to the come to the Beat Museum July 13th. We will have another celebration of the Haight Ashbury Literary Journal, our new issue. All right. So I'm going to read a couple poems by other poets that are in this issue. This one's called. It's by Catherine Lucas. It's called Wild Iris. Because my voice is a pool of silent twilight in a pocket of green fern, you notice me. Because my words are veined prongs curled up to a cup of drop of sun gold, you stop and listen. Because my sighs curve three petals downward to canopy blue air against my stem, you love me. Because you did not hear my rasping birth song distilled from cries of gulls at dawn. Because you will not hear me when I wither to mauve whisper. Because you were at first surprised, but now, remember, there will be music like me every spring. You leave me lightly, unbruised by parting. Nice. And this next poem is by Will Walker. It's called, it's titled Subversive. Because living is a tricky business, I bless the earth when I can, by morning light, hoping to emulate the finches 
clocking the trellis out back. An upturned forest of star jasmine and broken via. Shades of green not yet in bloom, where the finches seem content to perch and sing and fly to another perch. With no pattern I can discern, announcing daylight and affirming all that has led me to watch them in their busy work. The unthinking of embrace of any available branch, the glide through sunlight, the song of no occasion, Subversive by Will Walker. And um, so this poem I wrote it is, ah, I was waiting it is for called that. Um, Red. Daybreak. Cuffs of my pants painted in sherry. A romp through the orchard of morning. Morning. All my birthmarks joyed. Noon, my pockets smirched in rows. The boy skyrockets to his afternoon. Cool waterfall pedals his bicycle. Dusk, still hungry after the harvest. Sleeves of my shirt smudged by blood. In the mirror, another beauty mark spent. Midnight, lapels of my jacket steeped in wine. The pulse of my cup chimes through the dark. I swing on red yarn, strummed by the moon. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Take a lot for the other, the other editor. Rocio is next, and then Clyde always follows Rocio. As it were, and then Kay, Kay Morrison, or we, well, we get, we'll get it all worked out. Kay Morrison, then there we go. Let me just um, get you focused in there, dear. And let me just get rid of this and we'll go off in one minute. There we go. There we go. Okay, this um, poem is called Sunday Night on Hate Street. Am I still living in these dreams, waiting for my new life to begin? Some days it is hard to keep moving when I slowly rise instead of crawling on the ground. Painful the rising may be. My spirit reviving again is cast equado, iridescent plumage, transforming, reawakening to beauty forgotten. When restlessness inside wants to turn to passion, happiness is flying towards me as a monarch orange butterfly. All is coming towards me now in bright orange circles, flashes of color and music from prints. People walking down Hay Street, people breaking rules, making it fun to be alive, to be around on a free Sunday afternoon. Thank you. This last poem is um, called Please Don't Die. It's about uh, my mother when she died. I was 17 at the time. Please don't die. Please don't join her. Please come back. Please, please stay here. Please don't abandon us as she has. As model turtles swimming in a lake, finding petrified redwood and an abandoned camel coat at the edge. Please wake up. Herbie was standing by a rose bedroom door on a concrete floor. Our family was too poor to afford to buy a carpet. Our sister Lisa, Laura, heartbroken. She swallowed all our mother's pills from our bathroom cabinet. We never found our mother's body. Was this a suicide or did our mother find on that scary lake a rough wooden raft and pull it to heaven? She could not swim well. Wake up so you're young in school were her last words to me. Tonight on a rainy night, I am in school. I could sense our mother listening to us and every sound in our house after she died, even to the sound of lizards lying at the foot of yellow platforms. Wake up, wake up, please wake up. Laura had fallen into a deep sleep. She had lost the will to live. After our mother disappeared at midnight in a cold sweat, I woke up to a worrying sound of helicopters searching for our mother's body, for nights and days, her body never to be found. 
Our family could never give her a burial so her spirit could rest. All the angry deaths, all the broken hearts. No red and white roses and a cross to give her. No Catholic burial, nothing to hold on to. Fog feeling, empty and ghost-like. Ice blue crescent moon, purple morning glories climbing up the beauty of her soul. We are stronger than we seem. It seems to me that some things can fracture us. Wake my sister up after she had been sleeping for three days. Thank you. Okay, Morris into the chair. Thank you. Go, Clyde. You're on. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, come on, come on. Come on, step on up, folks. Want to grab yourself a front row seat? Well, they're gone. They're going fast. Oh, you don't want to miss this? Yes, yeah, time for another exciting installment of the Clyde Always Show. With me, you're always clever, always handsome, always charming host, Clyde. Always, and I ain't no common carnival barker. I am the Bard of the Lord. Yeah, and this is the girl with the lavender hair. I like this Honor. one. Oh, thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the show. On a sunshiny day with a breeze of the bay flowing under the clearest of skies, between avenues gritty, they're set in this city where mountains and monuments rise. The park by the mission, a likely position, was swarming with girlies and guys. Every bare-chested bro had a frisbee to throw. Every blogger a tweet for the feed. Every flannel and beard looked distinguished and weird. Every yogi enlightened indeed. Every fur-covered mutt had its nose in a butt. Every stoner, a blunt full of weed. And the tower bell rang with a bang and a clang, but no creature there bothered to catch this voluptuous dame, the girl with the air of a queen, and maneuvering as a cat in the flimsiest skirt which she dragged in the dirt, holding on to the floppiest hat. She was muttering words to herself or the birds, then she hawked a beluggy and spat. Whoom, that's when Muni and Bart and the popsicle cart, they all suddenly stopped in their tracks. And the rustling palms and the babies and moms, they went stiller than statues of wax. And the ravings of bums and the hippies with drums, they fell mum as the sweat on their backs. By the jungle gym tights who had rode in on bikes, they all merged with the bricks in the wall. On the basketball courts, all the homies in shorts, they infused with the hoops and the ball. The burritos, guitars, all the double parked cars, they existed as nothing at all. Then the tall boys and shorties and hipsters in forties, their buns and their beanies unfurled. <laughs> And the picnics collapsed on a river of paps All around in an eddy it swirled While a big cosmic hole, black as raven of coal Opened wide and then swallowed the world And alone in the night, flying high as a kite And suspended in darkness of space Was that purple-haired chick in the midst of a trick With a devious smirk on her face She guffawed her joke as she rolled up her smoke And on stardust she lit it with grace with an echoing boom, she respired a plume, so enormous and ashy it soared, though as hot as it seared, it eventually cleared to reveal all the setting restored, the green grass under sun, all the folks having fun, loud as lions, a reverie roared, in oblivious bliss, every mister and miss carried on with their happy affair, while apart in the drift, riding off in a lift, and not knowing exactly to where. With the park in the sky, just a spark in her eye was that girl with the lavender hair. Really quick, thank you to Alice for accepting in the journal. This was my offering uh, featured in that journal. It's called The Song of the Cottonwood Sea. With windless winter morning breaking, blazing rays and icy airs, a hilly hiking undertaking, counting worries, fretting cares, when, by my eye, it dancing, quaking, white and fuzzy, thousand hairs, says I, hello, and lovely floating, speaking not, it bobbed a bit, so light and flight, it nothing, toting, needing not to rest or sit, it not but happiness, emoting, smiled I, goodbye to it. Thanks, everybody. Come to my show at the Mars. Yeah. Yeah. This was this first one is called Her Burden. It was written after 
a hellish week with the kids. I also managed to scare a guy away in one week. Oh, and then I watched Thelma and Louise, and then I... I oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <Or> the model. <laughs> uh, her burden. In one week, a woman can grow life, shoot a rapist, bleed out the last word while he leaks red hell onto car fenders. She waxes when she isn't waning. In one week, a woman can talk tears off suicidal bridges while she bridges words to new days holding smiles, awaiting breakfast, bre breakfasts mixed with unmet friends, self-discovery over easy, pancakes that make pain to pass. In one week, a woman can become an armed robber, or she can nurse bottles and beers and in the same week bring freedom to kids she never raised but she carries. While vacuuming others' mess, one woman can write a poem on hallways she architects inside her head that always she revises surveillances. She can burn down the world with flam flammable honesty then discover fire extinguishers while men choke, cough, drop for cover. She can ignite love and then perplex while flames destroy what she sparked in one week. Yeah! I got one more because I don't know if you know it's a full moon. And it's a big one. This is going to be a lot of, a lot of outbursts. It's gonna happen, so. This is a, my dedication to her. Uh, this is called Eight Hour Shift because she has her eight phases. Mother Moon is no prostitute. But she spreads her legs onto Gustav Klimt prints nailed onto burgundy bedrooms. She wraps her pale velvet thighs around one woman awake beneath stained black sheets, cold love replaced by remnant nightfall, wet violet. Mother Moon charges by the hour though, even for a harmless dance. For full price, she sends mariachis to balconies unswept, conjuring hearts starving, blue balled and bereft. For a little less, she hovers. Broken-hearted tongues suck salt left between her breasts. Her blood moon womb swooning for love inside sex. Lonely and cauldroned, conjuring. Mother moon naked blue arouses red inside my flesh. Left sticky by her librations, I hear my backbone think. My nightlight mother, I smell you inside my flesh when I awake to the daytime dead. My mother moon, always a pleasure. Our business in my bed. Thank you. Cesar says, I totally forgot. I just. You always forget, Dan. It's I forget, okay. I forget everything. I look in the mirror in the morning and go, who is that? Why is he there? Then I realize it's not a TV. I'm sorry. The first poem is, my name's Raina, and this poem's called Diary Entry on a Monday Afternoon. <laughs> Assisted living seniors, ragamuffins, and produce people, <laughs> pecked for fruit at the strawberry stand. Bobbing, bending, like birds in winter, swallowtails hiding behind the heather. Among the snobbery, hope springs deadly. Construction talks and the natives walk. Improvements in the forbidden city means kicking and pricing out the dark of skin and worn of parka. Receive the message of ancient ruins, of dreams on a merry-go-round. A pervert groper haunts the metro. Woman's eyes blink in Morse code as the weirdo cometh. Out on the street, the pigeons make love and strange girls dance on the backs of heroin-laced wolves as sticks and buckets break into percussion. Little boys with quarters clenched in hands pop and lock. Lady pushers squeeze onto the York bus amid a symphony of insults. A boy named Justice 
with a dove on his shoulder, coos peace. The boy spits, spits his discontent into a cup. A generation killed by the police, Salem's lot, eulogies and speeches. Bones of the techies will rebuild the city. Will the cries from our mothers stop the brutality? Junkyard dogs growl, guarding the weedy yards as the tenements fall. Yellow flower petals rain ribbons of color on the beer people, yelling sacrifices and sonnets into a microphone. <coughs> Newspaper reporters do an article on the air in a jail cell while the con men sing soprano. Feeling like Robert De Niro, a girl ducked into a car, a stolen Camaro, drove up to Twin Peaks and saw heaven in the gray eyes of a shaken child repelling off the moon's western slope, scattering drops of empathy forgotten in the future on the creatures below. I'm going to the city, love walk with me. Forest of Blue, the rush and the din, the thrush on a limb of a tree along the river, rafts and fishing boats quiver under the excited weight of multitudes in the collapsing crevice of summer. Deer freeze outlined in the leaves, cherubs sleep along the rocky outline of the beach, awake with laughter from the sun's ghastly shadow that haunts the footprints of tragic wanderers. Little skulls drum dissension in the nefarious eyelids of the Department of Interior Trees. Thank you. Thank you.